It's Rebecca with Bex Fine Art. Welcome back to part three of this series on how to add a nebula to your hydro flask. And yes, I filmed this all in one day. That's why I look exactly the same. I didn't just do my hair and makeup the same way every time. Copper was also a little bit tired of filming and if I pick up Rogue, then Copper will get jealous and that's a whole thing. So that's why I don't have any dog in this video. Anyways. For this video, I will be talking about how to add some really awesome stars to your nebulas, and I'll go over a few different techniques for that. So let's look at our materials. So we're about to add the stars to this, so I just wanted to share with you guys the supplies that I'll be using. So I have this awesome oil paint pen, is by Sharpie. It'd be awesome if my phone would zoom in on it. There we go. Again spray painting so my hands are dirty. Um, some white paint and then some primary blue. So those are really the only things that I'm going to be using for the stars today. So we're going to start off with the very easiest thing to do and then work towards the hardest. First thing is I'm going to do the splatter technique. So how you do that is you take your white acrylic and you dip your brush in your water a few times, water it down so it's nice and runny. And then you're going to bend the bristles back with your index finger so that way you end up flicking the paint onto your surface. So the farther away you get, obviously the more spaced apart your stars will be. If you're closer, then they'll be closer together. So I'm gonna add this all over the bottle. Some areas I'll leave the stars a little bit more sparse, some I'll leave, put them closer together. Hopefully my hand isn't getting in the way too much of this. You may have noticed that I have a painting back there. I just like to have a nicer background when I'm shooting, but obviously I don't want to get paint splatters on it, so I always flip it around once I get to this part in any painting. All right, so then I just like to turn it around, see if there's any areas where maybe I should add a little bit more. This paint was pretty watery, so I'm gonna have to go back in with my paint pen to brighten up some of these stars because really the only ones you're seeing are the super small ones. So that's gonna be our next step. Now that the paint has dried a little bit, I'm going to be taking my paint pen and anywhere where I notice that the stars are a little bit lighter, I'll go ahead and just go back over that. You can also do this with your small brush as well. It doesn't have to be your paint pen. I just think it's a lot easier and then you don't have to keep dipping your brush in the water if you use a paint pen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then we'll talk about a couple different ways that you can add starbursts. Next part is the starbursts, which are basically just your typical kind of crisscross stars. Um, so where I like to put those on my bottles is generally in the lighter areas where you see the highlights of the clouds. So there's a couple ways that you can do this. You can use your paint pen. So for that, you kind of want to do a quick flicking motion. That way you get the ends to be nice and pointy. So there's one. And then you can also do it um, with accents as well. So it doesn't just have to only be four points. You can do it with five points or more. So let's make another one. The only hard part about the thicker paint pens is obviously you have to be really careful when you're doing this, otherwise you end up with really thick lines. So if you can get one that's skinnier than this, ideally that would be the best thing to use. If you don't happen to have a paint pen, this is also really easy to do with just plain white acrylic. So you'll need a very small pointed brush 
for this. Let's find a new area to do that in. And then it's basically just the same technique. You just want to lightly press your brush down so you'll get a nice skinny line. So you gradually lift the brush up off the bottle as you're doing this. That's what helps to get those really skinny streaks. And then if you want to add more, you can add more to your starburst making me really want to eat Starburst candy now. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few of these over the rest of the bottle and then I will show you how to do the glowy stars. The thing I wanted to point out as I'm sure you guys have noticed as you're watching is I'm making sure to do a variety of sizes and make sure that the stars are all a little bit different so I'll have a cluster of bigger ones and then mix in some smaller ones. I'm realizing now I need to add some that have a few more lines to them because right now that one's the only one. But um, you really want to make sure that you have a variation of sizes because again it just adds to that realism and although this isn't necessarily a realistic nebula we want to create the idea that it is. the stars really help to pull together the detail on this it just looks so much more finished having that so now I'm going to show you how to do some of those glowing stars I'm not going to do too many on this one because I don't know if it really needs that but I'll go ahead and show you guys a couple and then if you want a more detailed explanation of these check out my stars specific video. When I pick an area for the glowing stars, usually I pick an area that is more shadowy, not necessarily in the clouds. And what I'll do is I'll get just a little bit of blue on my brush. I'm going to make a decent sized circle with it. And what I try to do is fade out the edges of the circle so they're nice and soft. So an easy way to do that is to wipe the paint off of your brush before you do this so that way your brush is clean. And then all you're doing is kind of just using the brush to scrub the edges of your circle which will help to soften that up and help it make it look like it's glowing a little bit more. So after this, I'm gonna take my brush, I'm not gonna clean it, dab it in a little bit of white, and I'm going to swirl that white outwards towards the edge of the circle. Now something that you might wanna do as you do this is consistently wipe off your brush. Don't wash it, just wipe it off, and that'll help you to achieve that nice soft blend as you go out towards the edge of the circle. And I am going to add a little bit more white to this, so don't worry if it's not too bright. But you can see that I have a really nice soft transition by doing that. So again, I'll take just a little bit of white, again not rinsing my brush, dot it in the middle, wipe off my brush, and continue that same technique of wiping off the brush and blending the edges of the new dot of paint until it's nicely blended in to the layer before. And you just wanna keep doing that until you get a nice bright center. So as you continue to do this, you'll need less and less paint until the very last step, all you'll need is just a tiny little dot of white and you'll be done. So I'm going to repeat that step again, this time just showing you, and then we'll continue with a time lapse.
is the finished product with those glowy stars. I tried to keep them pretty subtle because I didn't want them to overpower. I think that the starbursts are really the thing that looks the best on this particular bottle. So I hope that you guys all found this super helpful and you'll be ready to try out your own stars. All right guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my series of videos on how to paint a nebula onto your hydroclass. I think I might continue to do a series of videos for different techniques, that way I'm not creating 30 minute videos that are way too long for anybody to watch. Don't let Ro fool you, she is actually a happy dog. She just doesn't like to be on camera, that's why she's got this grumpy little face right now. As usual, you guys know my email is info.bex at gmail.com and then my social media is at bexfineart. That's for any social media accounts. See you guys next time.